guys, it's Ro. Welcome to another Nerdy Nummies. I got so many requests from you to make something My Little Pony themed in honor of the new My Little Pony movie that's coming out. And I'm super excited because we have made My Little Pony cupcakes before in the past. But today I wanted to do something bigger in honor of the movie. So today we are going to be making a two-tiered cake. And I want it to feel like a screenshot from the land of Equestria with all the little ponies. Get ready to make a lot of cake. Let's Let's get started. The recipe that we're using today is the white cake recipe from the Nerdy Nummies cookbook. The ingredients that I have in front of me are enough for one 10 inch round pan and one six inch round pan. I'm going to double it. I'm gonna make two 10 inch round cakes and two six inch round cakes. The ingredients you'll need will be one cup plus two tablespoons of milk, two and a quarter cup of sugar, seven eggs, but we will just be using the egg whites, three cups of flour, one quarter plus one eighth teaspoon of almond extract, three teaspoons of vanilla extract, one eighth teaspoon plus a pinch of salt, three teaspoons of baking powder, six tablespoons of shortening, and three fourths cup of salted butter. Now let's put it all together. Here, here, here. First step in a large bowl is to whisk together our dry ingredients. Add flour, baking powder, and salt. Then whisk together till well combined and set off to the side. Now cream together your butter, sugar, and shortening in a large bowl. Pour in the sugar, mmm, butter, and shortening. Then using an electric can mixer, mix together until light and fluffy. Now add in your eggs one at a time. Remember we just want the egg white. So what I like to do is the jiggle method. You'll also want to mix between adding each egg. So add an egg, mix it up, 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 add an egg, you know. You get it. After the eggs are mixed in, add your vanilla and almond extracts. Mm -hmm. Mix it up and just take a second to smell the vanilla. Mm -hmm. All of our mixtures are ready. We have our dry ingredients, wet ingredients, and milk. Add a third of dry to our wet ingredients, then mix it up. Add half the milk, then mix it up. Add another part dry, mix it up. Add the second half of the milk, mix it up. Then add the last third of the dry and mix it up. Don't forget to scrape down in between. Let me get this really pretty. The batter is ready. Now eyeball it, divide it between the two pans. I have greased and lined with a piece of parchment paper at the bottom. This is gonna be the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> Just go for it. Okay, I'm gonna get some over here. All right, the back over here. And we need some over here. Don't look at that. <laughs> If you just wanted to make a shorter cake, you can just stop here and pop these in the oven. But I am gonna repeat this process one more time. I'm gonna make another batch of batter. Heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake the smaller cake for about 45 minutes and the larger cake for one hour. While the cakes are baking, we will be making our fondant decorations. I have marshmallow fondant that I've dyed a bunch of different rainbow colors to make all of the details. Also, a bunch of mini cookie cutters and circle cutters. I want the cake to have a bunch of apple trees for Applejack, so we'll start with the brown fondant. The trees will sit flat against the side of the cake to make a landscape. Try to give the tree some texture, make it look like bark, and then start making the top of the tree. I'm using a bright green color. I've got a small circle cookie cutter. Cut out a bunch of these. Boop, 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 boop. Then we want a bunch of leaves. I'm using a very, very very small, probably the smallest teardrop shaped cookie cutter I've ever seen. Look at it, this is like a human tear. So to get the green leaves to stick to the green circle, I'm using water and the moisture is just gonna help them stick together. I'm alternating the placement of the leaves up, down, up, down because trees and leaves grow all over the place. Open up that red fondant to be apples. A little dab of water and stick them on the tree. I think Applejack would be pretty proud. Oh, 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 these are pretty great. Wait till we're done, you're gonna love it. <gasps> 
What's that, Applejack? Every apple orchard has some fallen apples? Okay, we'll make some spare apples that have fallen around the base. I'm free handing the leaves on top, put them on the center, boop. We've got the apple orchard covered. Now for some bushes. I'm unwrapping the dark green and light green color. Roll them out. Cut out a variety of sizes using circle cookie cutters. Remove the excess fondant and cut them in half. We'll layer these on our cake to make our bushes. We have all of our shrubbery. Now for the cake topper. I'm gonna be asking for the help of Rainbow Dash because she's always flying around the skies, keeping it clear. I'm making a rainbow cake topper. I want it to look like a rainbow in the sky. So the back piece is going to be light blue like the sky. Roll this out and shape it into a round door shape. And time to make the rainbow. You can pick any colors you'd like. I chose red, orange, yellow, green, darker blue, and purple. Roll each color into a log, thicker at one end and thinner at the other. Our fondant logs are ready. Now shape into a rainbow. <laughs> Oh, something tickled me. Okay, to give it a little flare, curl the ends. So it looks like a curly ponytail. There we go. Just keep following the same shape, adding each color. How cool does this look? I wish my hair looked like this. Then me and Rainbow Dash could be like twins. Hey girl, I like your hair. I'm like, oh thanks. <laughs> Take a little paintbrush, dip it in water, paint the back of the rainbow. This is gonna act as an adhesive so it will stick and place on top and let it set. The last thing we're making are some clouds. One of my clouds will be 3D for the cake topper and the other one's flat. For the flat clouds, roll out the fondant and using a flower cookie cutter, cut some shapes. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop. Then for the 3D cloud, roll little balls in varying sizes. It's gonna be cool. Our cloud balls are all lined up. Now, roll out a very thin layer of white fondant and place over the top. Oh, it's gonna look so cool. Tuck it in, cut off the excess fondant, and there you have it, a 3D fluffy cloud. Our cakes have baked and I've given them plenty of time to cool and cut each of our cakes in half. It's time to assemble and frost. I put one of the cakes in front of me on a turntable, then pipe a thin layer of buttercream frosting on the top. Smooth it out using a spatula. Add the next layer and repeat. Add a layer and frost. Then when you get to the top, flip the last one upside down so the bottom of the cake is facing up. This makes frosting a lot easier and less crumbly. Frost a thin layer all around the cake. This is called a crumb coat. Cause, you, cause there's some, cause you might have a few crumbs in it. That's okay. Woo! Pop it in the fridge to chill while we do the exact same thing to the smaller cake. After the cakes have chilled in the fridge for about a half hour, we will cover them with fondant. In front of me, I have a really big pastry mat because one of the cakes is quite large. I'm gonna start with the small cake. Look at this. Fondant rolling pin, isn't this cool? It's huge. And you also get an arm massage when you're doing it. Oh yeah. Roll the light blue fondant about a quarter inch thick. Fold back the fondant. I'm gonna fold it over my arm like this. Place the cake in the middle and cover. Then gently using your hands, smooth out the top. Be sure to get rid of any air bubbles. Then smooth out the edges. Then using a small sharp cutting knife, cut off the excess fondant. Trim the edges closer to the cake. Get in there and peel off the excess fondant. This is what the small cake should look like. Now we will do the same exact thing to the large cake, but using green fondant. Both cakes are covered in fondant, so let's stack them. Now is also the perfect time to choose what serving plate you wanna use. I've covered a serving plate in some green fondant fondant so it all blends together. You don't have to do this. This is totally optional. I'm gonna assemble first and then move it 
because I've been working out, you guys. These guns are ready for a big move. We don't want the cake to bow because of the weight. We need some structural support. To do so, we have straws. Press one straw all the way down to the bottom, then pull up just a little bit and cut. Then press back down. Boop, place them where you want your second tier cake to be. I'm gonna place the second tier cake not exactly in the middle, giving us a little bit more playroom in the front for decorations and stuff. Now add all of the fondant decorations that we made from before onto the cake. You can get really creative with it to create a little snapshot of Equestria. Our cake is almost done. We put a ton of fun details, but what's a My Little Pony cake without My Little Ponies. We have Rainbow Dash. She goes at the top. Rarity, she's gonna come hang out here because the diamonds are her cutie mark. She designs clothes, she's super fashionable and glamorous. Pinkie Pie, who's my favorite, loves to throw parties and celebrate. Her cutie marks are the balloons. On the bottom tier, I'm gonna put Applejack because she's always working on the apple orchard. Twilight Sparkle with her magical unicorn. She's always studying books in the library with a little baby dragon, it's so cute, I love it. All right. And oh, Fluttershy. And her kitty marks are the little butterflies. And ta-da! Here is the My Little Pony cake that we made today. A big thank you to you guys for suggesting something My Little Pony themed in celebration of the new movie. I am so excited, you guys. I love making two-tiered cakes because you can create a whole scene. This looks like someone went into Equestria, took a picture of the little ponies hanging out in the land, and I Love it. I'll be posting lots of pictures and the recipe on rosinapancino.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So you can check it out there. And if you guys make any treats that are My Little Pony themed, please take a picture and send it to me. I love seeing your baking creations. It just makes me happy. It makes my day. And if you have any ideas for any other nerdy dummies, please let me know. Leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to make it happen. All right. Thanks again, you guys. Bye bye. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do